Hello. In the previous uh, two video lessons, uh, I started with the optimal uh, extraction path of a non-renewable resource and introduced the so-called Hotelings rule. Then in the previous uh, lesson, we saw that uh, the empirical price paths observed for oil and, and metals does not really, really follow this kind of uh, constant growth projected by the Hotelings rule. So in this uh, video lesson, then I will discuss how technological progress can shed light on why this kind of uh, uh, real world prices do not really follow, uh, follow the theory. So let's first start with the with the more specific uh, the, what 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 uh, what how we can understand technological development. Uh, so here is nine characterizations from the textbook by Permanent All. So very often we think about technological progress or technological development uh, uh, in terms of innovations that uh, that allow some resource to be used for some specific purpose. Uh, another type of innovation can be can be also like development of new materials. Here is example of synthetic fibers. So this is often this kind of uh, uh, very very much this kind of engineer driven uh, yeah, innovation. So some new invention. But technological progress can also occur uh, gradually as a part of the the production process. So for example, there can be some productivity. Uh, growth in the in the like for example by learning by doing and uh, if we talk about uh, non-renewable resources then for example extraction processes can can uh, become more and more efficient over time and uh, here is an example of uh, large-scale earth moving equipment uh, that makes uh, uh, strip mining strip mining and low-grade uh, mineral deposits or utilizing them low-grade mineral deposits uh, more profitable than they would be in the past. And the fourth point is also, also that, for example, scientific and technical discoveries might make uh, exploration activities cheaper. So there has been in the past, for example, aerial photography and seismology. So it is uh, this kind of uh, exploring potential new reserves can become uh, comes, uh, uh, possibly cheaper over time. Uh, now then, of course, uh, there can be also technological developments and increased efficiency in the use of resources uh, and uh, development of techniques which enable one to exploit low grade but abundant uh, deposits. I will I will come to this uh, this uh, point uh, also shortly. Uh, then, if we if we also think about recycling possibilities, so that's of course also very very important part of the of the especially non-renewable resources uh, and uh, and then it might be also possible to substitute more low-grade resources to to vanishing high-grade deposits and um, in, and so on so so this uh, technological development has has multiple different different sides that's the main main point it's not only new new inventions but there can be also this kind of uh, gradual a productivity increase of the processes and also in ability to find find and utilize uh, new research which might be of lower lower grade so this is why it's important to understand when we talk about non renewable resources that uh, that uh, the size of the reserves is never actually fixed but uh, but uh, we can think about uh, uh, three types of reserves and when we talked about the size of resource, very often the uh, attention focuses only on the proven reserves that uh, that are currently being extracted or or known to exist and and could be could be utilized at current prices and costs. So notice that this uh, um, very much depends on the price level. So if the if the price of the non-renewable resource increases, then uh, that so immediately there will be uh, some kind of additional reserves that become profitable, which were not profitable before. So the second category is probable reserves, uh, which include stocks that are known uh, with near certainty, but uh, uh, 
which have not yet been fully explored or researched. So, so when the prices increase, then of course uh, companies then then start to investigate more in detail these kind of probable reserves. And then there is the third category of possible reserves, which are as as the as again prices rise, then there is more incentive to then then explore these possible reserves more more thoroughly. So always when we have some kind of estimates of uh, uh, some kind of non-renewable resource uh, running out in the near future, it's worth to keep in mind that uh, that uh, that as the prices increase, then it's it's very likely that some new reserves will be also also found and will be will be utilized, uh, which are currently then not not uh, profitable to extract yet. So if we have this kind of uh, take into account the possibility that new reserves can be can become uh, can be discovered over time because of the technological progress. So, so here's again from the textbook by Permanent Al an illustration how the net price path would look. Uh, in, remember that in the hotelings rule we assumed that uh, that uh, the the stock is fully known and there's no more of that that stock. Uh, in any any possible way, but uh, then this kind of more more um, this uh, this uh, bottom figure illustrates how the price path might look like when there are frequent new discoveries. So the technological progress then makes it possible to utilize some some reserves that were, were not uh, profitable to utilize before. So then this start to look more like this kind of uh, empirical observation of price path. So this is why, why in, in this context as well, the technological progress is, is something that uh, that it's also worth to keep in mind. So let's then come back to the specifically the case of of oil and uh, revisit this peak oil hypothesis that I started with. Uh, so in the previous lesson, I had this kind of geologist prediction that uh, how the world is uh, uh, running out of oil in the in the near future. Uh, here's another proje projection uh, which which runs to 2035 uh, and uh, this this takes into account in the gray color this kind of uh, fields yet to be developed and, and light blue color is fields yet to be found uh, and then there's also yellow color is uh, so-called unconventional oil so if, if, of course I, I should uh, emphasize that these kind of uh, uh, projections or scenarios to the future they are of course always always uncertain so so of course if fields are yet to be found we cannot really know how large this kind of like for example this uh, this blue area is but uh, but uh, it doesn't seem like uh, like the world is uh, running out of oil uh, oil in the near future the question is that uh, that is it uh, profitable to to continue to use oil and if we now connect to this kind of environmental policy measures then then uh, uh, perhaps then then uh, for example some kind of environmental taxes or or emission permit schemes then will make it uh, make the consumption of oil so expensive that uh, that it's not profitable to do so so based on this kind of projection it could be argued that uh, that uh, the consumption of oil is not going to decrease unless there is some kind of uh, uh, indeed some kind of uh, uh, policy intervention that uh, that that uh, incentivize then then uh, the consumption of energy to towards more more renewable resources so here is an illustration of of the technological progress in the in the context of the of the um, uh, oil extraction, particularly, so the left uh, left side uh, uh, il illustrates this kind of more traditional way of of drilling, which which is a little bit like uh, like uh, like uh, sucking the the the, the jelly donut. Uh, so there is like a, that very very basic technology. However, when when the technology in drilling uh, develops and of course price increases in oil will of course uh, incentivize uh, uh, more development of this kind of better and more efficient ways of uh, 
of drilling. So so there can be also like more sophisticated, for example, this this diagram illustrates uh, um, horizontal penetration. So the oil industry, of course, can also develop uh, more efficient ways to extract such uh, such reserves that are not uh, not um, not utilizable with the or not profitable to utilize with the with the old technology, but with the new technology that can be more efficiently utilized. So this is one example of uh, technological progress. Then in this uh, this one projection, there was this uh, unconventional oil was was mentioned. So so I want to clarify also uh, what does that mean. So so one example is uh, oil shale, which is basically uh, just uh, just some some pieces of rock, and uh, the, this kind of extraction of oil from oil shale is is uh, uh, is rather expensive. Uh, but when the prices increase, then then this might become also also profitable. Uh, unfortunately, as this slide uh, is indicating that uh, that the process of extracting uh, shale oil uh, produces uh, a lot of emissions and waste, uh, and and this is really harmful for the environment. Uh, so so this is also also then then really. Uh, uh, really, uh, an undesirable scenario if the if this kind of utilization of of unconventional oil becomes more common. So, if you look at then the, the world energy consumption, then this uh, this kind of uh, figure high illustrates that uh, that uh, there is some increase in the energy efficiency in the sense that the consumption of energy per capita has been has has been slowly uh, decreasing from the from the 1960s however the volume of consumption increases still because of the population growth uh, even though the the birth rates are are not not increasing but uh, but uh, we we found that the population grows mainly because uh, because the the people live longer and and that's why there's also then more more energy demand uh, and uh, as we can we can see also the global level so the this is this is based on 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 uh, uh, on uh, uh, some some uh, uh, oil company statistical review but but anyway anyway we see that uh, that uh, that uh, the fossil fuels are still uh, at the global level very very uh, prominent or the most uh, largest uh, source of of energy and the renewables is the green color and and hydro on the top of this uh, this uh, this figure so the share is still relatively small even though it's it's increasing and uh, another another figure also that another another projection still uh, uh, the world energy consumption by energy source uh, that uh, that although the uh, energy energy production and consumption of renewables is projected to increase uh, Perhaps now it looks like that the renewables might be increasing a little bit faster rate than here, but it's still uh, with these projections also the, the maybe the consumption of all coal would kind of level off, not not increase anymore, but rather level off. But still the uh, petroleum uh, is is still projected to to increase in the in the future. So. Based on these kind of projections, it doesn't seem like that uh, that uh, that the peak oil is necessarily uh, reached yet, or even even in the very near future. And uh, as I mentioned already before, that uh, I do not believe that world is running out of oil reserves. Uh, uh, we need some kind of um, uh, effective policy measures uh, that uh, that would uh, have this. Uh, uh, in some sense, force uh, companies and households to to this kind of energy transition towards more more renewable energy sources. So, in the next theme, I will then uh, then uh, turn to renewable resources and and what we know about the management of uh, renewable resources, such as uh, so, such as um, uh, forests and uh, and timber resources and, and fisheries. Thanks for your attention and see you next time.